Good evening. I am your host, Keith Johnson, and we are investigating the Nathaniel Green Homestead, located in Coventry, Rhode Island, known as the Mount Vernon of Rhode Island, or at least Coventry. And would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is um, Charles Reese. I've been um, giving tours at the Nathaniel Green Homestead for about uh, three years now. Um, Born and raised in Coventry, only came here uh, four years ago, like most good people from Coventry. Mm -hmm. Would you please give us a little background on exactly who Nathaniel Green was and his wife Catherine? Well, Nathaniel Green was born uh, July 27, 1742 in uh, Potawatomi, Oregon, Rhode Island. Um, he was the son of a Quaker minister, but um, he, you'll learn from his life that he wasn't necessarily the best Quaker because he, you know, obviously he fights in the revolution. Right. Um, but initially the family, his father owned this land to create an iron forge on the property. But when his father passes in 1769, uh, he, um, the thing you green inherits it, but you know, like Rhode Islanders don't like to travel more than five minutes back and forth to work. Even back he, then. <laughs> he, back then he actually built the house in 1770 just to be close to the forge. Mm -hmm. um, but he only stays in the house until 1775, and that's when he marches off to the, uh, for the revolution. Um, only comes back uh, three or four times, once in 1778 for the Battle of Rhode Island, uh, once in 1781, and finally in 1783 when he comes back here with um, his other friend, who he has many good friends, um, Marquis de Lafayette. Uh -huh. um, but then in, uh, he, he gives the house over to his brother in uh, 1783 because he had creditor issues. He spent all his money for supplying the war efforts, including um, the supplies at Valley Forge, uh, food and uniforms for the troops in the north and the south. He also uh, hired the boaters and purchased the boats for the crossing of the Delaware. So he had creditor issues and uh, gave the house over to his brother. He then moves down to Savannah, Georgia to a place, place called Mulberry Grove in 1786, but dies of heat stroke June 19, 1786. He was considered one of the most important generals in the revolution. He was George, uh, George Washington's favorite second command and best friend and uh, he most of his claim to fame comes in the southern campaign he fought in the battle of guilford courthouse which happened march 15 1781 but he mostly did like um strategic guerrilla warfare mm -hmm. and by the time yorktown happened and cornwall surrenders at yorktown um nathaniel green controlled most majority of the southern cities and the british had very few and it's how he earned the nickname savior of the south which is pretty funny because people in places like Georgia and North and South Carolina, you mentioned Nathaniel Green, they know exactly who he is and absolutely love him. And then you mention Nathaniel Green up in Rhode Island, they're like, who? Yeah. <laughs> right. um, now, this, you mentioned Catherine. Um, they married uh, July 20th, uh, 1774. She lived in this house longer than he did. Um, she was a very uh, interesting woman. She was very um, liberated for the 18th century. Um, she was one of the things, she was not a Quaker, she was a, a Baptist and she was very much into dancing, she was a big flirt, mm -hmm. she wore clothes that were not modest for the 18th century. Today it's considered totally modest, but for the 18th century it wasn't. And um, she didn't really get along with much of her in-laws, but she was a, she absolutely loved Nathaniel, bore, her, bore him five children, um, George Washington Green, Martha Washington Green, Cornelia Lott, Nathaniel Ray, and Louisa Catherine. And even after Nathaniel died, her and um, Washington remained great friends. She remarries in 1796 to a man named Phineas Miller, and George Washington and Martha Washington um, attend the wedding. Um, one thing that Catherine never gets much credit for was she pretty much helped um, with the invention of the cotton gin. Yeah. She meets Eli Whitney sometime in the late 1790s down in Mulberry Grove in Savannah, and uh, she finances the cotton gin but um, she also invented part of the cotton gin, particularly the part where the, there's the brush mm -hmm. and um, it, the, with the gin spinning and it takes the seeds out of the teeth. Well, she came up with that, yeah. but she Didn't was- she donate one of her hairbrushes for that Yes, purpose? yes. Yeah. Um, but the problem was she, uh, she was a woman, so she couldn't file a patent. Oh. And if you didn't file a patent, you weren't the inventor. Mm -hmm. um, just like technically Eli Whitney wasn't really the inventor, he just ripped off everybody else and, <laughs> and, 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 and patented and he becomes the inventor. Um, and she's also, she was also the who's who, she knew everybody, she was friends with 
um, Lafayette, Alexander Hamilton, Aaron Burr, and she was really good friends with um, Henry Lighthorse Lee, who spends the last month alive at her new house on Cumberland Island. She sells the house and moves to a place called Dunganus on uh, Cumberland Island off the coast of uh, Georgia, and she dies there in 1814. When Henry Lighthorse dies and um, gets ill and dies in 1818, he spends the last um, month of his life at Dunganus. Mm -hmm. So she was a very she's a, uh, a very remarkable woman. Oh, I'm glad you're such a wealth of information. <laughs> this is wonderful. And I gave you the Cliff Notes version. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to do a full-length documentary sometime. Yeah, that'll take a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you go a little more in depth on the actual relationship between uh, George Washington, the father of our country, and Nathaniel and Catherine Green, uh, why they were so close and how that developed? Well, part of it comes from, it happened on March of 1776. That's when uh, Nathaniel Green meets Wa uh, Washington for the first time. This is during the um, Siege of Boston. Now, Nathaniel has become general at the time, and pretty much is that they're in the room, they're in the room, George Washington's in the room with all of his men, mm -hmm. and Washington wants to attack the British head on and get them out of Boston. Mm -hmm. And all the British, I'm sorry, the British, all the generals are like, that's nuts, we can't fight the British, mm -hmm. you know? And the only person that supported Washington in this endeavor was actually Nathaniel Green. Nathaniel Green pretty much says, that's a great idea, I totally support you. And so that's how the friendship began. Now, of course, uh, there is the, some things are rumored to go on in this house. It's interesting that neither Nathaniel Green nor Catherine passed away in this house. They were in Georgia. They were both in Georgia, yes. And, and that's where they're buried today, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, Nathaniel Green is buried in the um, Obelisk in Johnson Square, a monument to him, and Catherine is buried in Cum on Cumberland Island. Mm -hmm. And despite that, uh, we do have some uh, interesting uh, paranormal activity that does go on in the museum. Um, most of us believe Nathaniel Green is not here. We don't. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. Um, we've had some other people tell us, you know, psychics believe that Nathaniel Green is not here, but his wife Catherine is believed to be here. We think it's because of all the places that she lived in, only this house still stands. Mm -hmm. um, Nathaniel Green actually has another, his childhood home actually still stands. And it's actually owned by one, his uh, great, 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 great grandnephew. Mm -hmm. So he might be there, we don't know. Um, also, Nathaniel Green's grandniece, Elizabeth Margaret Green, she was born in the house and died in the house and was the last Green to live in this house. And we also believe that also Jacob Green, his older brother, might actually still be in the house. I see. To your knowledge, though, nothing really, I mean, of course, with any old historic house, you have the multiple births and multiple deaths as well. But uh, to your knowledge, has anything really uh, brutal happened here? Anything like uh, no sense of a uh, homicide or anything like that associated with this house? No major crimes? Or no major crimes. You know, typical family drama. Yeah. We had, uh, there's a man who lived here named Theodore Foster who was a shyster. Uh, uh, not because he was a lawyer only, he was also a drunk and a gambler. Right. And um, pretty much stole most of the family's money. And um, when Elizabeth Margaret inherited the house, she almost had no money left. And then when he died, she buried him somewhere. Oh. on this property. Your guess is good as mine. We don't know Nobody knows where. <laughs> we don't know where he is. We assume that he might be, this family cemeteries um, in the woods, might be outside the walls because that would have been a huge insult to bury somebody outside the family walls because he reserved that for slaves or diseased people. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you had, you know, there was always um, high infant mortality rates. You know, Catherine did have two other children that did die. One of them was stillborn and one of them was a few months old. Um, but nothing unusual for the 18th and 19th century. Mm -hmm. You know, you had the typical family drama. There was fights over money. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Yeah. The, and there was also conflict between uh, Catherine and Jacob because Catherine was very much not a Quaker mm -hmm. and Jacob was very much a Quaker. Yeah. And they didn't really, they, they were family still, but they really didn't get along that well. Right. Um, and it was interesting when he moves in here in 1775 because he actually moves in here to specifically watch Catherine mm -hmm. and 
she got into a huge fight with him and actually moved out of the house for a while. So, so nothing unusual. Just that, you know, like I said, he had stillborns. But that was, again, not uncommon for the 18th or 19th right. century. And another thing that might not perhaps be so uncommon, uh, I believe Catherine was 19 and uh, Nathaniel was 32 yes. when they were married. And yes. they did have a wonderful relationship yes. with the fact that they had five children. Yes. Yeah. Well, as far as we know, there was nothing they were, pro were very much in love with each other. I read the letters. Oh, really? And Nathaniel and Catherine, he adored her. He worshipped the ground uh, oh. she walked on. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly because she was this very free-spirited liberal woman. And, you know, Nathaniel Green, you know, didn't follow the Quaker ways. He loved books, which was a big no-no. Oh, yeah. And um, he married himself, in essence. Mm -hmm. You know, and even though she was 19, he was 32, I wouldn't say it would have been scandalous for the 18th century. No. Um, uncommon, more uncommon, but nothing like, oh my god, you know. But you describe them as soulmates? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. From past uh, investigations we have here, there seems to be like she really, really, really do uh, misses him and they were soulmates. Okay. Now, as far as the investigations go, what basically has been experienced? Uh, you mentioned that people have picked up on, on the fact that they did have this deep romance and uh, yes. caring for each other. Well, one of the things that did happen, um, I'll talk about what people who are investigators happened. We did have this one lady um, who picked up an EVP that said Lafayette. Oh. Now, she did not know that Lafayette does come, does come to this house and probably stayed in this house. Um, mm -hmm. Back in 1783, he visits here. Mm -hmm. And she also got a uh, EVP that said fire. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a fire sometime around the 1850s and 1860s. Um, there is some damage in the, uh, a room called the Elizabeth Margaret Room. Um, we've had one girl who saw a child um, standing in Nathaniel Green's bedroom by the bed. Now we have had people who said they've seen children here, especially down by the cemetery. Like I said, in the cemetery does have children buried, you know, mm -hmm. in the 18th, 19th century it was very common. Yes. Um, we had, actually, a few weeks ago, we had um, some tour uh, people come in and they told me that the lady went down by the cemetery and saw two children. Mm -hmm. And I kind of told her, I was like, huh, that's kind of weird. We usually see three children. <laughs> like, she was kind of so shocked that we weren't shocked at all. It's like, yeah, we hear it all the time. Um, supposedly, a, a boy has been seen in the top floor um, in the attic area. Um, we just don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. um, other people have picked up some stuff on like K2 meters and yeah. mel meters and stuff like that. Um, me personally, my very first experience here was when I was actually opening up for the house. Um, this is like two weeks uh, working here. And I type in the um, alarm code mm -hmm. and I almost messed up because um, I look to my right into the dining room area and there's a gentleman standing in the dining room looking out the window. Um, he, I'm trying to describe me, he was like in his 40s, mm -hmm. had like long kind of like scraggly hair, kind of like a, looked like a little beard and mustache and wore like a coat that, the only way I can describe it is like what Jack Sparrow wore in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. And it was kind of weird because I swear I scared him really? because he was looking out the window and then turned and it looked like he freaked and backed away. Mm -hmm. All I remembered was I yelled at them, don't do that while I'm typing in the alarm. I don't want to set it off. Right. And they never did again, so I guess yeah. they listened. Um, We've had, uh, like I said, there was a girl who was seen in the um, bedroom, but we haven't had too many apparitions here. I'm probably one of the only tour guy who's seen an apparition. Mm -hmm. But other people have heard uh, jiggling of the handles. Mm -hmm. um, we had one tour guide named Jackie who um, was putting on lipstick in the mirror in the, in the um, parlor, and she heard footsteps coming from the, um, the second floor from the Elizabeth Margaret room and stopping by the stairwell. I've only heard footsteps once. Mm -hmm. I've heard... Um, the museum um, wooden 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 things, <laughs> what they're called now, blinking, um, dropped. No one's ever seen them, but you always you hear them, and it's a very noticeable. It's a big bang. Um, we've had objects moved. I've seen, I've noticed objects move. It's like they're playing tricks on you. They're particularly dresses. The old dresses have been moved so many times, um, and we've had had one woman be touched in a very nice manner. Yeah. She was just sitting there reading a book and um, she felt these hands come around her. Very comforting. It freaked her out still. But yeah. It was very comforting. Yeah. Um, and like I said, uh, there was another time I was on the second floor 
with uh, two other men and the, we were the only men on the property mm -hmm. and then we heard a female talking on the second floor and the guy was like did you hear that and I'm like I heard that and the third guy's like like smiling he was all like yeah I heard that too um, that's the only voice I've ever heard but the common one is uh, doors opening up and jiggling of handles mm -hmm. yeah have you or has anybody in this house that you know have been truly terrified by the activity here no Nobody's been scared out, not wanting to come back. No, no. I mean, we've got people who were like, you know, like when that time when I saw it, I'm like, don't do that again, especially right, in the yeah. dark. I mean, you got those, but nobody's ever really been scared. Mm -hmm. um, we've had, okay, the we, only thing we've ever had happen was we've had people we gave tours to get a little bit uncomfortable in the Elizabeth Margaret room. Now we think, don't know for sure, is that because that was both Catherine's and Elizabeth's room. So I think it's more of um that's my room. Okay. Um, there's also this sort of the idea of between the Elizabeth Margaret uh, Margaret room and then there's another room across the hallway. They're not saying it's bad, but there's definitely like something um, like you know that there was another person in there. There was one person there fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, we we assume it was Catherine and Jacob, and we think that might have been a regular residual. So you kind of sense that they were fighting in that hallway at many times. Mm -hmm. uh, but you get like the Woo, but you don't like you don't you don't feel threatened or want to run out. All right. Now, was George Washington ever in this house? Despite rumors, I wish we could say no. Um, the only never slept here. Never slept here. The <laughs> only one is Lafayette. Yeah, Lafayette was here. Lafayette was here and probably and most likely slept here because what when you visited people back in those days is usually a week, so they right. usually slept over. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for this interview. You've been extremely informative and You're it's welcome. much appreciated. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Now it's time for our investigation. actually has been moved many times. Oh, really? Yes. And over here, the door has been opened up many times. And this is the one that where the handle, seem, the handle noises seem to come the most. It would just open up. And it's not an actually easy door to open mm -hmm. and shut. Or anything, 
of a paranormal nature in here? Yes, there, there was another apparition seen in here. Oh. Um, right by the door over here. Yeah. Um, there was a person was walking down the hallway and looked in a sort of, almost like a very heavy set woman walking into the door over there. That door leads down to the root cellar. Um, now that person did run out. She does, she does come back. It just startled yeah. her. She was right. You know, right. never come back in, but it did startle her. Now, when you say active, what has been experienced here? Oh, where do we begin? <laughs> um, well, while we had people hear footsteps in other rooms, the footsteps always seem to begin in this room, walk out into the hallway and seem to walk towards the stairs. We've had um, new, most of the EVPs were captured in this room. Now, another, the big one, as a, as the creepy doll, well, well it's not, okay, the very valuable 1880s doll, but yeah. the doll has actually moved many times. Is that so? Including the carriage moving all the way down to where the doorway is. Um, scared the bejeebies out of the person who came in here and saw the doll right there. Mm -hmm. The arms have moved. Um, we're not exactly sure why, but in one of the other rooms on display is a little broken uh, porcelain doll head that was discovered in the family dump. Oh, yeah. Really? And when it was put in the house, this stopped moving. Is that so? Correct. We've had imprints on the bed over here, like somebody sat on it. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was once a dress there, mm -hmm. and the dress was constantly being moved around a lot. We've had, um, we've, we've haven't had any apparitions in here, but we have had objects being moved around. Um, various little, the little knickknacks and doohickeys have been moved around. One time I did leave a DVR, a voice recorder, in this room overnight. We've, I've heard um, the, the dropping of the wooden museum pillars and um, sound like glass being like somebody taking their fingers and clicking on it. Yeah. And um, a lot of some EVPs I've, I've caught up sound like a woman speaking in here too. Um, Anything intelligible? Sound like well, me personally sounded like it was singing. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other people they they can hear some, most of them sound like they're saying they were singing. Is there anyone here who is unseen that would like to speak with us? Does anyone remember Catherine? What secrets does this room hold? Please give us an audible sign that you are here. Do you know who started the fire? Do you mind us being here? Is anyone unseen in this room? This room in which General Nathaniel Green slept. Is anyone here in distress? Does anyone here need help? Are you a member of the Green family? Can you prove that you are here by knocking on the wall or on the floor? Was that a response? If so, can you knock again? Thank you.
Thank you. Can you prove that you are here by knocking on the wall or on the floor? Was that a response? If so, could you knock again? Thank you. together and just enjoyed being together to tell stories? Do you know anything about Spell Hall? What is the meaning of Spell Hall? Well, that wraps up our investigation of the Nathaniel Green Homestead. We've had a wonderful time here. It's a beautiful place. Very, very historically significant, obviously. We really come to respect the presence and the memory of General Nathaniel Green, his wife Catherine, a very charming lady. Charles, I'd like to thank you for being our tour guide in this house. And You're very welcome. Especially you and the Nathaniel Green Homestead Association. We appreciate it. We're very indebted to you. Beautiful, beautiful place. This is Ghost Arnier coming to you from Nathaniel Green Homestead. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Turn on the lights on the right at the door.